Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to be having a look at how we can stack cutters to make effective detailing. So we're going to have a look at this using our firebase that we've been doing, and I've already done a part of this here, and you can see this gridded pattern of additional supports and details that look a lot like the original picture of what this scenery is based on. Obviously this was originally in cardboard, so you didn't have any of this 3D detailing, but as we're doing this as a model, we can now put that on, which is really nice to be able to do. Now, this is something that people might look at and think is particularly tricky or gonna take a long time. I also have added a bevel to this just to make it easier to see on YouTube because sometimes the reduction in resolution makes this tricky to see, so hopefully that's gonna help that out. But importantly, this is a really, really key skill for hard surface modeling. And it's not to do with any bit of software in particular. I'm gonna use Hard Ops and Box Cutter for this. There's a link in the description for that. It's an affiliate link, so you'll be supporting the channel without costing you any extra. And if you're looking for a add-on to buy for hard surface modeling, this is really one of the top ones for it. Now, as I said, that software is useful, but really it is just a skill and a thought process when we talk about stacking cutters. So let's go and have a look at how we do this. Before we begin, I just want to say thanks to all of you that are supporting the channel over on Patreon. If you've been enjoying the channel a lot and you want to add some extra support, then please feel free to head over. There's a link in the bottom and in the description, and anything's really appreciated. If you're over there, you get all the videos ad-free and you get them early. Also, if you choose the 3D designer file tier, you get the designs that I create as part of that Patreon. So let's get back to this. So let's first of all, I'm going to go into wireframe just to get this edge, which is where this begins here, so we don't cut into something we don't want. And as I said, I'm going to use hard ops and box cuts with this, but you wouldn't need to, you could use whatever you want. I'm just going to come into side view, alt and W, and then D to make sure that we've got a box cut going on. And I'm just going to select something somewhere around there just to get a good general shape. Now I'm sort of eyeballing this here. You could do this how you want. Now, having a look at this, we can see that there's instantly a problem in that, well, this object now is all sticking out with a big gap. And this is because obviously we've inset this entire area here, but it's a very quick one to solve, as long as we're aware or thinking about what we can do with stacking these cutters one on top of each other. So if I press Q and ever scroll, it's ever scroll that makes this really useful using hard ops and it's very easy to find what cutter is affecting what. And now if this is the cutter, the cube that is being used to delete this bit of the panel, what we can do is effectively, if we take a bit out of this, is going to return the area of the panel that's being cut out. And you'll see what I mean. So if I just come into side view again, make sure I've got that selected. And again, with box cutter, do something like that and then drag that in. You can see as we're doing that, that has now returned this bit of the surface because the cutter has now been removed in this section. And we can go a bit further than this if we want to. So again, ever scroll just to make sure we've got the right one. And then we could cut out something from, let's say, the middle. So maybe something like there. And then we've got that bit there as well. So it's really quick to be able to do these additional details. At this point, I think I can probably turn off the wireframe because we can see that quite easily. But it's very quick to add in these and modify these insets. So let's have a talk about these beams because this is a relatively simplistic thing to do. Again, if you don't have hard ops, you're just going to be doing something like bringing in the objects yourself. But hard op does have this Engon cutter, which if we turn off of cyclic mode is going to give us a nice line that we can just draw through. So again, I'm going to go into side view, Q and ever scroll to make sure we've got this cutter selected. And I'm just going to do, let's say there and then there. And then if we want one coming in the other direction, I could do something like maybe that, that, and that. And now we've got this detailing of the sort of girded line. If we hide that, we can see that a little bit more easily. So it's really, really quick to do. And as long as you think through the process carefully, it's very easy to get additional detailing in here. For example, if we have a look at these girders, we will notice that I've got the main outline raised up, and then we've got a little bit that's further down for some of the girders, which is just gonna make it a bit more interesting and appealing to the eye. And again, it's very quick to do. If I just Q, ever scroll, and then select our overall cutter, and then again, Q, ever scroll, and now, find the object that's cutting the cutter, I can then do something to modify this. I could either, for example, select it and then G and Y and move it back a bit. And you can see what that's doing. It's just meaning that this is slightly further in. Alternatively, if this was a little bit more complicated. If I undid that, instead of doing that, what I could do is come to side view and D and then use a box. And then I could again, cut off this front portion which will have exactly the same effect. 
So multiple ways of doing this, but it is vastly easier than trying to add in a lot of different objects. And more importantly, it's less likely to cause you issues when combining these Booleans together. Now this is not a unique trick, it's a fairly standard part of hard surface modelling. If you want to watch some other YouTubers that do a very similar thing, there's someone called Josh Gambrell, you've probably heard of him, he's got a hell of a lot more followers than I have, and he does a lot of tutorials on hard surface modelling, mostly for CG work, but there's obviously parallels there, which are going to work really well, and he uses this in a number of different occasions very, very well. So definitely go and check him out if you haven't before. Though I will say I don't think he's ever done a specific video discussing it and how this works. So I thought that would be useful for people to see. Now I think from what I remember that he often refers to this as cutting cutters, which is a perfectly acceptable way to go about talking about it. But I did want to point out that this doesn't always have to be cutting. It depends on how your thought process works. For me, this works. But if we come over this side and do something slightly different, I thought I'd talk about this in a slightly different light. So I'm going to cue ever scroll and select this one again. But this time we're going to do it in a slightly different methodology. I'm going to D and I'm still going to use my box cut. So let's come in here, select that and then we'll drag that down. Okay, so we've got this now and it's cut away the back of our cutter, which means that now we've got less of an inset. Now, as well as using things like the cutting, we can use other Boolean methodologies. For example, we could quite comfortably, in fact, let me cue ever scroll and then just S and Z that a bit wider so it doesn't cause any problems. But what we want to do for this, if we want to come up with the same effect, is instead of this time thinking about this in a reductive way, we want to think of this as an additive way. We've added this in, but we only want to add it in in certain places. And again, there's a Boolean for that. So instead of using this where we did a cutter here for this side, I'm going to press D and I'm going to use an intersect Boolean. And what an intersect Boolean does, again, we want an Engon line that's not cyclic. An intersect Boolean is going to only select areas that overlap and keep them. So in this bit, because we've got this part that's further forward, we can do the same thing, but only keeping certain areas. Let's see what I did on the other side. I started from this corner. So for this, we want to ever scroll again, and we're only wanting to add or intersect this section there, the one that's pulling the surface forward. So we'll do the same thing. We'll try and mimic the pattern over here, though I doubt it's going to be identical. We just use mirroring for that. So there, 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 and then we've got there and there. And we'll go through, drag that back, and you can see this time it's had the same effect, but this time by adding to our surface instead of taking away. So again, it just depends on your thought process, but either way, it's very fast. And importantly, when you come to apply this, it's gonna cause a lot less problems in terms of your overall topography and give you a lot less to fix. So hopefully that's useful, gives you some ideas of things that you can play around with and how to make this detailing on multiple levels. As always, if you found the video interesting, please do give it a like. If you're really tempted to, come across to Patreon and have a look at what we've got going on there. And as always, have a really great day.